breakfast will be ready in a minute, Charles. Fresh orange juice and homemade coffee cake, your favorite. Nancy, I'm disappointed in you. Why? Miriam, she keeps asking for you. Oh, Charles, come on. My sister was just driving me crazy. I had to get out of there. I couldn't stand it anymore. Always ready with an excuse, aren't you? Oh, let's not get into this again. Will you go and see her? All right. Charles, don't you think this is getting to be a bit ridiculous? What? Well, why don't you give up your room in the King's Arms and come move back home? Not now, Nancy. But why? Because the King's Arms is nearer to the hospital and I want to stay as close to Mim as I can. Jenny, you left your book. Honey, what's wrong? Huh? She made me promise not to tell Mommy. Jill, what did she say? Mommy, I told her that I wouldn't tell, but I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss you too, kid. I guess you get the picture. No, Jill, I don't think that I do. I'm going to leave this small town as soon as I get a bus ticket. But do you have to? You'll understand it later, kid. Jill, you just can't pick up and leave like that. That's the way I came. Jeff, she has just announced that, that she is leaving. Is this true, Jill? Well, it's about time, don't you think? I mean, I've caused enough trouble here already. We don't want you to go, but we can't stop you from leaving. There is one matter you have to take care of first, and that's the phone bill. I thought about it. I'll send you the money. I'm sorry, Jill, but that answer isn't acceptable. You don't seem to understand that Liz and I don't have the money to pay that bill. Then I'll send you the money as soon as I'm settled. No, Jill, it isn't acceptable. We've already received a second notice on the phone bill. Well, what am I supposed to do? I don't have any money. Well, you can work in the bookstore. We've already discussed that. You work in the bookstore for me until the loan or the debt is paid off. Then after that, if you want to leave, you can go. Is it a deal? I'll think about it. Jill, who is that girl in the park? Just a friend. Did she run away from home, too? No, she doesn't have much to run away from. Her mom's dead and her dad's a wino. She's been on her own since she was younger than you are. Is she a dope? <laughs> no, silly. She just smokes dope. But why? Uh, Jeff, why don't you answer that? Jill, I could use some help in the kitchen with the dishes. Okay. Daddy, how can you smoke a dope? I thought you could only be one. Honey, dope is a slang term for marijuana. Come here. See, marijuana is a bad thing. It's a drug. It messes up your mind. Is that why they were acting so silly? That's right. It makes you do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Sometimes it's bad things. It can be very dangerous. Well, you know what? I think they were being pretty dumb. I'm never going to do anything like that. You know what? what? I think you're pretty smart. Hey, I am pretty smart for a kid, huh? <laughs> oh, that was a delicious breakfast, Nancy. Thank you. Anytime, Charles. My pleasure. You're always my pleasure, Charles. Why, Nancy? Yes, well, I don't know what it is. I don't see you anymore. I mean, when, when you're here, you're so preoccupied. Well, I simply haven't had the time lately. Well, if you were to move back home, then perhaps... Now, you know. Nancy, I have already explained that. I'm going to keep my apartment at the King's Arms. Oh, but Charles... Now, know, listen, be... there is no need to worry. I will continue to pay the rent and the household expenses. But I'm not thinking about money, Charles. I'm thinking about you. <sighs> I'll get it. Well, your work day starts early, I see. What are you doing here? Is that you, Webster? Oh, yeah. Charles, I'm sorry, but I wanted to get your signature on these contracts right away. It's important. Leases for Hollister Mall. Why didn't you show them to me? Well, I tried to get hold of you earlier, but uh, well, you haven't been the easiest person in the world to get hold of. That's because I was visiting Mim at the hospital. I know, I, know, I understand. I just want to get things moving on this right away. All right, well, and how are things moving with the divorce, Harold? Papers all been filed. 
Only thing we can do now is wait. Something you're not real good at. Charles, I hope you're consulting another attorney for this, as I said. Sorry, uh, Sugar Plum, but uh, it's not gonna make any difference who you talk to. It's the law in this state. Yeah, but a whole year. Yeah, a whole year. During which time, I hope my friend here comes to his senses. Well, what exciting adventures have you got planned for today? Still more studying. Laura, you've only got one exam left, and you're all set for that. Why don't you just uh, enjoy the day? Boy, what I wouldn't give for a day with nothing to do. I just can't get used to the idea that school's almost over. Why don't you call Marianne Prescott and go shopping? Yeah. Maybe I will. Honey? Yeah? What's wrong? You seem so down. Nothing. Really. <laughs> now, come on. Tell me. What is it, the job? Well, they haven't exactly been beating down my door with job offers. Well, it takes time. But there's been nothing. Not even a nibble. Yet. I know, but still... In Lori, the now listen, these things don't happen overnight. Now, I'm really surprised at you. This isn't like you at all. Now, come on. Where's your faith? Seek the Lord's guidance. <laughs> That's easy for you to say, Mr. Professional. You know you've got a job. You've got 10,000 things to do each day, all pre-planned, nice and predictable. Mm -hmm. And there was a time in Hollister Square when uh, it was hand to mouth. But we kept believing. Hey, now, I meant what I said. Enjoy your spare time while you still have some. Right. Good. As usual. I know. Maybe I'll just loll around all day eating bonbons. Uh, somehow I don't think that's your ministry. We've been married all this time, and you didn't know Miss Piggy was my alter ego. I had my suspicions. <gasps> Out. <laughs> Out. <laughs> okay. That was some good stuff you had the other day. Where'd you get it? From a friend. He only gave me a few. Wish I had more. Me too. If you hadn't given it to Jenny. No joke. Hey, I'm sorry about that scene the other day. So that was a lady you were telling me about, huh? Yeah, she's pretty stiff. Her old man's like that too. And that was their kid, huh? The one that was there the other day? Jenny. She's the only sane one in the bunch, except when she snitches on me. But they're no relation, right? Does it seem like their type? No, but I just thought that. I'm from Indiana. I was going to see the world, but I ran out of money in Kingsley. Of all the places to get stranded. I was kind of down and out on my luck, to put it mildly. The Cummings took me in. Into their home? Yep. They're uh, the real do-gooder types. Real drag. Why? Why'd they do it? I don't know. I think I was their good deed for the day. They like to do things to make them feel better than everybody else. But that woman, uh, Liz, she must really care about you. <laughs> no way. If she didn't, she wouldn't have gotten so mad at you. You don't know her like I do. She gets mad about everything. Still, you're pretty lucky. How do you figure that? At least you have a place to stay. Uh, but what I have to put up with, though? Do this. Don't do that. Do this. Rules, rules, rules. They think I'm going to corrupt little Jenny. Could be worse. Uh, I doubt it. You ought to try living at my place sometime. I thought you said you'd live with your father. I do. But half the time, he hardly knows I'm there. And the other half of the time, he doesn't care. Well, at least you can do what you want. My father used to get like that sometimes. Last Saturday, he was so loaded, he didn't even know who I was. He was crazy. Look at my arm. Oh, wow. How did that happen? He just started yelling at me and threw me against the wall real hard. I fell and hit the doorknob. Your dad did that? 
He gets crazy, I tell you. I try and stay out of his way when he gets that way. But where do you go? Out. To a friend's. Anywhere. Here, sometimes. Right? Sometimes. I'd trade places with you in a minute. Rules and all. Things are really moving on the clinic, Alex. I cannot wait to get working on it. You know, have you started remodeling yet? I understand that's really going to take some doing. Nothing we can't tackle. You know, it's been a dream for so long. There were times when I wondered if it'd ever get off the ground. And now it's just around the corner. Oh, and the place is a mess. I mean, we have to start from scratch. The floors, the wiring, some of the plumbing, everything has to be redone. And it's going to be done right. I want this clinic to be the best of its kind in the state. Well, no reason it can't be. It's going to have one of the finest doctors around. Well, thank you, Alex. No, I mean that, Ben. I think what you're doing is fantastic. Mm. And very necessary. Do you have any idea what the infant mortality rate is in that area? It's almost twice the state average. Mm. I know. I mean, it's disgraceful. If, if the clinic can just make a dent in that problem alone, I'll be happy. Well, it can, Ben. You know it can. Oh, by the way, um, I haven't seen Terry around for a while. How's she doing? Well, she's been very busy, but she's fine as far as I know. Well, I'm good. Well, we can ask her herself. Um, Terry? You. Oh, Joyce? Excuse me. <laughs> Doctors? Please, please. We were just talking Thank about you. you. Oh, well, nothing bad, I trust. Oh, we were trading some of the latest gossip. But see, word is, uh, you're very hot stuff. Oh, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, ben here was just telling me that uh, he's starting to work on the clinic. Yeah, there's plenty to do. You know, Ben, I've been thinking, you might consider getting Jason to help you out. Oh, well, I don't know, Terry. I don't think this is the kind of job Prescott does. Well, it's worth a try. He has an excellent grasp of the needs of health care personnel. Uh, I thought he was in construction. Oh, well, yes, he is building the new wing here. But all along, he's shown a great understanding of medical facilities. There's a gal I'm looking forward to. Yes, <laughs> oh, Mitch, pull up a chair. Thank you. Let's go around here. Yeah, well, Millie couldn't make it for lunch, so I thought I would seek out my next most favorite lady. Oh, well, I don't know. As you can see, she's very much in demand. <laughs> I think it sounds like you and Millie are getting pretty serious. Oh, I'm afraid we are, like a couple of kids. I didn't know I could feel like that again. It just shows you, Alex, uh, there's still hope for us old folks. Oh, well, that is reassuring. <laughs> but let me warn you, don't wait as long as I did, because... Uh, Feeling's too good to pass up. <laughs> well, uh, don't look at me. This town is such drag. There's never anything to do. I can't wait to get out of here. Yeah, I've been thinking about splitting myself. Ever been to St. Louis? St. Louis? I'm thinking about going there next. What is in St. Louis? I have a real good friend there. When I split Kingsley, I'm going out west. California. L.A. maybe. How about San Francisco? Yeah, maybe. I hear it's pretty neat out there. Liz used to live there. I might go there next, if I can get the money. I don't know. I'm not too crazy about earthquakes. <laughs> like I said, I'm moving to St. Louis. <laughs> Jill! Is he a friend of yours? Yeah. No way. Uh, what's happening? Hi, Gary. Chill out. I'll see you later. Who was that? Just a girl. Oh. Uh, listen, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Well? Well, I, I just wanted you to know that I don't hold anything against you. I mean, getting me thrown in jail and everything. Look, it's cool. No problem. I know you didn't really mean it, getting me in trouble. Transporting stolen property. That Brubaker must be out of his mind. Yeah. What a joke. Uh, listen, Jill, if, if you ever want to get together again and, and do something, I mean, well, just let me know, okay? Look, I've been thinking, Gary. Well, you know I'm getting out of this town. Well, I need some cash. I don't know, Jill. I've been putting an awful lot of money into my car lately, and I don't I'm have... I'm not but... asking for that. You know the uh, liquor store on Spring Street? 
What? I can handle the stick up, but I need a good driver. You'd be perfect, Jim. It'd be easy. This time, just don't put your foot on the brake when you hear the sirens. Put it on the accelerator. Are you out of your mind? We could do that job like that. You're not serious. I've been working on Peter's car. I've got it souped up. We can take any car on the highways. You, you are serious. I want to get out of town, and I need some money to pay for the bus ticket. Are you going to help me or not? Jill, I, I got to be going. But you are incredible. she does. This has been building up a long time. But why now? Doesn't she care? I don't know what she thinks anymore. You know, somehow I thought by telling Jill that I was her mother, it would make a difference. It's meant nothing. Well, Jill is a very mixed up young lady. You know, I don't even think she knows what she wants. All my efforts to reach her have been meaningless. She's further away than she ever was. I don't know what to do. I want to be a mother to Jill, a real mother. Well, that idea is going to take a lot of getting used to, especially for somebody like Jill. I can't let her go. Well, you know, I did tell her that she's got to pay that phone bill before she leaves. And what did she say? She'd send me the money. She can't do that, just walk out. That's irresponsible. That's exactly what I told her. I said, Jill, you've got to pay the phone bill before you leave. And how did she react? Well, the typical Jill. Okay. That's what really bothers me about Jill. She has no sense of responsibility. Not that I've been the best example. Liz and I have tried and tried to work with her. I don't know where she gets the idea that she's going to get a free living from the world. You know, Jill not only has a moral obligation to pay that bill, she has a legal obligation. You don't mean that you... Take some legal action? No. No, I couldn't. And besides, what point would there be in holding her here against her will? I want her to stay in Kingsley because she wants to. What if she works at the bookstore for me until the debt's paid off? Do you think she'd do it? Well, I don't know. What have we got to lose? I'm afraid that's what Jill's thinking. She thinks she has nothing to lose. Hey, Peter, has Jill been doing any work on your car lately? Well, not much. She helped me adjust the carburetor the other day, that's all. Why? Well, she just said that she had it all fixed up so it could outrun any car on the road. <laughs> Come on, Gary. You know that car? On a good day with a tailwind and a steep decline, it wouldn't even do 55 miles an hour. Why'd she say that? I don't know. She's probably just mouthing off again, as usual. What else did she say? You know, some dumb stuff like she does sometimes. What about my car? Well, she, like I said, she had it all souped up. She, she said she was planning on ripping off this liquor store on Spring Street and then using your old bomb as a getaway car. And you believed her? No, I didn't. You did too. Look, Gary, she talks tough, but she doesn't mean half of it. Underneath all that, I think she's just a scared kid. Is she serious about leaving Kingsley? That part might be true, yeah. I don't think she's very happy here. I hate to see her leave. It's a bad gear, got a crush on her. Huh? <laughs> no way. Come on, you kidding? I just I just feel kind of sorry for her, that's all. I don't. I mean, drifting from, from place to place. I don't see how she can get along like that. I guess it has been kind of rough for her. She was saying how she needed some ready cash. I just hope she doesn't do anything stupid. And me too. Yeah, I hate to see her get in trouble again. You're the one who's stuck on her. I am not. <laughs> She's okay. She's okay for a friend. I just wish there was some way we could help her out. Me too. But you know, you know Jill, she's built a brick wall all around her. The way she is, yeah, nobody can help her.
Hello? Yes, is Jill there, please? Just a minute, I'll get her. Jill? Telephone? Who is it? I don't know. We'll find out. But Jill... Just do it. May I ask who's calling? This is Beth Slaymaker. It's Beth somebody. Tell her I'm not home. I can't do that. Why not? It's lying. Brother. Hello? Jill? Jill?